And for those that weren't on just a few minutes ago, I'm Robin Stauffer. I'm the owner of the Pheasant Field Bed and Breakfast in Carlisle. Uh, Rose is having technical problems, so she was not able to log on as the host, so she passed that off to me. Um, and I am recording the session right now, and I am going to turn, I've, so I've got everyone muted, so if you need to ask a question, raise your hand, I'll watch for that, or wave on the screen and I'll unmute you then. Um, so Pam, I'll turn it over to you. Okay. I'm here today to talk about how to attract millennials. Um, millennials at this place in time um, have a lot more money um, than I did when I was their age. Um, I've, got, um, I've got a millennial at, at, not at home anymore, but he's making six figures and loves to travel with his wife and, and new baby. Um, and so I'm gonna talk a little bit about that because um, the older generation, even though we do love to travel, we plan a lot more in, in advance. We'll typically do six months, maybe even eight months. Millennials don't want to do that. They are like ready to go sometimes less than two weeks, or they might even be calling you on a Thursday for a Friday stay. Um, usually they will look at the very last minute for discounts. But I think an up-to-date website is super important because even though they um, are going to definitely looking for free Wi-Fi, the complimentary breakfast, definitely the TV in the room. Um, and then the pools or hot tubs, if you have anything like that, they really like that. Outdoor spaces are a really big thing. They want to go for a hike or they want to go for a walk together. They also want the ability to log into like their Netflix account or any other entertaining streaming venues because they're already paying for it and so they've got all the devices that if they want to watch their shows that they have the ability to do that so if you do that on your website and let them know that you've got all these options i think it's going to be that's a nice big attraction the other thing that i am seeing is that just like what i was showing you with the pillowcase it was just different different ideas to get you your property featured on instagram and all those other you know, even Facebook, we kind of use as an older generation and they don't use as much, but they really like that Instagram and all those kind of fun ones that are coming out that they can get that instant, you know, gratification. Pam? Um, yeah. So the question is, can you define the age parameters for millennials? Yes, I would say that it's going to be from 21 to 35. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Is there any other questions? Okay. <clears throat> they also tend to seek out places that look kind of fun or hip. Um, they like to post their pictures and then on social media. So as I was showing you with the Fred's pillowcase, having some of those backdrops, um, Carol Beasley used to have a little jockey in her front um at the front of her house right next to her sign and she said thousands and thousands of people took their picture with that jockey featuring Beasley house right there so it was another way to get you know really free advertising as they're you know listening to all the people that they know um yeah the um the Fred pillowcase was a really big hit and that was just something that you know he just thought that he could Drum, and I'll tell you, he has a huge millennial market, huge. Um, millennials also like packages. Um, they like to, they like the elopement or the baby moon or the micro weddings. And you can put those things together um, and they're willing to pay the price. Um, they'll like, you know, getting the two robes and you say retail $80, but your cost is only 40. Um, but, you know, putting those kind of packages together is a nice big draw as well. The older generation, like myself, again, um, typically won't do some of those things because we're saving for
Are you guys all able to hear me? Yep. Okay, good, good, good. So yeah, keep those horizontal lines as clean as possible. You can still have vintage things in them. They still want to learn about history and, and um, you know, and like that a lot, but keeping it as clean as possible is a big draw. Um, the other big thing that's really a big thing right now that I really see is those digital guides. Have you guys heard about that touch day? Yes, no. So what it is, is it's, it's a kind of like a uh, mini pad that lists all the things that are in the area that you, that you recommend. So it can be restaurants, it can be bars, it could be dance clubs, it could be museums. But um, I highly recommend that if you um, put an item on there, because it's really great, it's replacing the books and you can update it. So everything uploads to their phone. So it could be the entry number to their room, the code that's in there. It, it's just, it has a lot of capabilities. So I definitely, I don't have any benefit of me selling it to you, but I have a lot of um, b bs that have gone with that and really love it because you can update it instantly and you're not having to print anything. It always seems to be nowadays, once you have something in print, it's already outdated. Um, you can offer last minute discounts. Um, or even a discount on a package. Um, but definitely make sure that your website is up to date and mobile friendly because they all use their phones. Um, keep an out, eye out also for online reviews and definitely respond to negative ones. Um, we really feel, and respond quickly because um, letting somebody sit and stew is not a good idea. Um, you know, as soon as I, if I ever have an issue with somebody that, that something has gone wrong, the faster you jump on it, the bet you're going to be able to kind of get rid of that negativity that you did care about, you know, what would be issue? How can we fix it? You know, sorry that you feel this way, you know, any of those things. Um, offer a communal area where millennials can gather and hang out and possibly meet new people. Now, obviously right now there are restrictions, but those are starting to ease. And um, many of them though, do want to seek out the opportunity that they can experience a new look through the eyes of the local. So once again, um, with that touch day, you can say, hey, there's a little local, you know, coffee house has got the best, you know, donuts or something like that. They really like those type of things. And once again, you're building trust definitely go to that coffee shop and try that donut. So you say, yep, this is the best. And um, so you're building a relationship with them as well, because then they're going to apt to want to come back. Um, they also like to hear the backstories about your inns, you know, what the history is and that kind of thing. So I definitely um, think that that's still a great idea. Um, they also want to know about all the local attractions. Um, you know, you can even offer a map of, you know, what the local area is and, you know, the places that you guys really recommend. Um, they also want to, um, they also like cozy places. So if there's a place that they can kind of wrap up, just sit together, even even by a fire pit, um, even a, or a, cro a cozy common area, those are always really nice. Um, and then also, definitely highlight the cozy features on your property. Um, and if you do have like the, a fireplace or an outdoor fireplace, which would be great. Um, you can also those the with those offer with those fire pits, you can offer s'mores or something like that. Um, fris Frisbee golf is a fairly inexpensive kind of a fun thing that they like to do or croquet set, which is fairly simple. And they can kind of mingle and, you know, meet people that way. But both of those are fairly inexpensive, but there's a, a lot of fun and it kind of builds community. So those are some of my ideas there. I'm open for any questions. Yeah, go ahead, Robert. Can you unmute yourself, Robert? Yes, um, you're talking about millennials that they want to meet other people. Mm -hmm. That sounds like my normal guests. I'm under, I was under the impression that millennials go and just want to have their own little couples retreat. Am I wrong on that? I, I thought that they wanted to be by themselves because 
they'll literally sit at the table and that for breakfast and they'll be they'll both be on their phones chatting away and not carrying on a conversation and they're usually the first ones to leave breakfast they get up and they go and they want to do their little thing so i didn't i mean i have common areas but i can't remember seeing millennials that wanted necessarily to have i mean there are a few but the i don't get a lot of millennials most of my guests are the the older age range um, guest and that's why I'm here because I want to know what I could do to attract them but what does everybody else think do they think millennials tend to want to interact with a lot of other people or that's just my observation yeah I think that if you know they kind of tend to group with the common causes so if you know if they're all wanting to hike or that kind of thing yes they are on the phones all the time I totally agree with you but um they also, if there's a common, you know, they'll tend to group, like if there is Frisbee golf and, the, and they think that's going to be kind of fun, they'll tend to want to do that and do a little, kind of a little competition. Same thing with croquet, right? So, because you're always going to have two teams. Um, so, sometimes I think that they have forgotten that kind of the interaction is kind of a really good thing. And um, they, they, some of them do tend to go out on their own and do their own things. I mean, if it's a honeymoon or something like that, okay, I can kind of understand. But um, you so, know, that yeah, Robert, this is Robin. I I tend to find, or we tend to see, you know, I guess the, the answer is it depends. Um, mm -hmm. You know, in the spring and the summer, we've got a large patio um, and, a, and we get, our demographic is all age groups. Um, you know, we've, we've got mid twenties up to, you know, 70 year olds that come in. Um, and when we have mixed age groups, it's on a nice day, they're all sitting on the patio, just in, interacting amongst themselves in, in the winter time or fall, it seems the younger ones are here for a specific reason. They're coming in either to hike or mm -hmm. meeting family. So they tend to be a little bit more secluded and not, they're more focused and not interactive. Um, so I think it depends on, you know, the, the weather and whether they're here for a specific thing or not. You know, breakfast, our dining area right now, our dining areas always have been separated and tables, um, you know, we don't serve all at one table. So the table crosstalk uh, is not always there in the morning unless there's really some outgoing guests, regardless of the age they're at. Um, so I, I, my answer to your question, Robert, which it, is it depends. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I just think that, you know, the, the more options that are available, you know, then, you know, and they can even be quirky. It doesn't, you know, you can just, you know, you kind of have to see what kind of sticks with your demographics and, and the people that are staying with you. But um, there are, yeah, it, I agree with you, Robin. It, it just depends on the couple, what they're doing and their specific goal for that, that little, many stay vacation you know whatever they're why they're staying with you is it for are they going to a concert you know or are they you know going on are they eloping or it you know it just depends a lot of times it might depend on if i have an extrovert extroverted couple that are very chatty um because i have i have um one couple that come before COVID, I mean, they've been here over a hundred times and the husband talks to everybody. And if he can get them engaged, then they'll start talking. But it's, it just tends to, I'm, I guess I'm thinking of like the 20 young 30-ish um, age group that they aren't the ones that are gonna necessarily initiate a conversation. That's gonna be somebody older, then they'll be engaged. but. All my tables in my dining area are separate. So I do get a lot of um, people to talk across the room. Um, and I actually go out and I talk to the guests too during breakfast. But I would say that the, when they're in their, the younger age group of the millennials, I still think that they get up and leave before most of the older guests. I mean, I've had guests stay for an hour 
in the dining room, just talking and chatting. But the millennials, they'll eat and then want to move on. But like you said, I think the, your point is have a lot of variety for them, have lots of different things that would be something that they're going to want to um, partake in. Well, and it's just, it's just a few things that they can try or whatever that's going to kind of gather them together that it doesn't have to be super expensive. I'm not saying that you, know, you, you don't have the space to put, you know, I'm not saying you have to put in a pool tomorrow, but it's just right. the little things like, you know, the Frisbee golf or croquet or s'mores by the fire pit for, you know, charging, you know, five bucks, 10 bucks, whatever it is, you know, you've got it already in a little basket and then they're kind of it, all those little things are kind of gathering, but it's not super expensive for you to do, but it's just something that puts you, puts you a different than just like a typical vacation rental, right? So you think, are you thinking that millennials will be more prone to do add-ons? Like if you had uh, a wine and cheese package, they might, they might, um, or chocolate or whatever, they might just add that right on when they make the reservation? Yeah, they will. How about if you had um, coupons um, to go to um, a restaurant? Did they do that? Do they tend to do that too? Or Definitely. are they more selective? No, I think if, it's a, if, you, if you have coupons for a restaurant that, that you recommend, definitely. Okay. Definitely will. So yeah, I think that the local recommendations too is, is really important. So, you know, um, so, and, and especially if they're quirky and a little bit out of the way. I mean, the big thing during COVID this, this last year was the big thing with a, a lot of the millennials, they want to check out what was in their state. So there's apps for that, that will tell you kind of interesting quirky, different fun places that you can go within three or four hours. And so that's where they were just flooding to. And we saw it a lot here in Washington. I mean, people were going up into the mountains or they're going to the coast or they were going all over just based on their mobile apps of fun, new, different places to go to. And so if you can make your place, because this is why you should be staying here. We've got all these amenities that are kind of a fun thing. I'm not going to nickel and dime you for everything, but we've got all these. You can choose what's you know going to be best for you guys, what you guys are looking for. I'm going to give another plug for Touch Stay, um, only because it's so easy to add a new location. A guest comes back and they tell me, well, you don't have any places for getting pretzels nearby. And I said, oh, there's tons of pretzel places. So I'll make up a new category. And in 15 or 20 minutes, I'll have five new places added to the app and they can pull them up on their phone. Yep. And when you said quirky, it just reminded me of a couple that came this last weekend. I'm in the Lancaster area and mm -hmm. there's lots of gardeners and Amish Mennonites here. But um, the guests came back and they said, oh, we found this place that has exotic plants. And I said, oh, really, what kind? And they said, oh, they're carnivorous plants. They're the, um, the Venus fly traps yeah. and these long tubes that look like a jack of the pulpit and the insects go in. Then she turned out to be a school teacher and specialized in ecology. And she was telling me that these plants, I thought they were tropical, but she said they grow natively as far north as like in the Carolinas. Wow. And she said there are even some of these carnivorous plants that will eat rats and rabbits and things like that. And I thought, oh my gosh. Well, I don't think I want any of those around. No. <laughs> <laughs> but she brought them in and they were really cool. I said, well, if you don't have a fly in the house, what are they going to eat? And she said, oh, you just put them outside for a little while. But um, it was it was quite interesting. And I think that might be something that a millennial, I, I'm already interested in going there. Yeah. To get one just yeah. to see what, what they're like. So I think the maybe one of the big things is we should put the Q word down, quirky. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's just, you know, it's, I've just really noticed it that they really want to kind of, you know, interact and see what's out there. And, you know, 
I think we should use this to our advantage too right now because they're not going to be traveling to Europe anytime soon. So I think that you, you know, especially during the spring break summer era, you know, if you can kind of draw, you know, more of that population, so there, it's a good, great time to really jump in and take advantage of it. I was curious of those that are using touch day. I, I found it kind of expensive for, I just had three rooms. Uh, is it on a per room uh, cost is seen pretty high. How many rooms do those that are using touch day have? Well, I have 10 rooms. I mean, it's, I think it's only about a hundred and ten dollars a year, isn't it? That, I mean, that's what's in my mind. It's like maybe ten dollars a month. It just didn't seem like it was that expensive because I mean, I have so much stuff listed on there, all the restaurants, and the convenience is is that it's so easy to put them on. You can put a picture up right off of Google. Then it automatically includes their phone number, the web link, and a map of how to get there. Yep. Then you can write whatever you want. You can you can write a little thing about it, like something that your guest might say about the restaurant or about the location or whatever. But um, I, I like it. My guests, my guests tend to like it too. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You're yeah, welcome. I know Shawnee at in a Mumford. She only has five rooms, and she absolutely loves it. She just writes about how easy it is, um, how. Um, some of the millennials that, that really, really like it, that have stayed at her place. Um, and she says, you know, within, you know, five, 10 minutes, it's all uploaded, it's all ready to go. And um, it's a really cool. So she, she was raving about it when I was talking to her last week, so. Okay, right. thank you. You're welcome. Is there any other questions out there? Comments? All right, well, if you don't have any anything else, we can conclude yeah. that. Yeah. Um, I mean, you keep, you keep saying, um, you know, basically how draw them in and get them there and offer these things. How are you doing that? Is that all Instagram? Is that all a website? Is that Facebook? Is that a mix of everything? <laughs> it can be a mix of everything for sure. But you've got to start on your website. Mm hmm Okay, that's where you start there first to kind of entice them. And then you can, you know, if you want to do the Instagram and, you know, the Facebook things for sure. Um, all of that kind of works. Um, but once you've kind of gotten it in place, you know what I mean? Especially your website, you're not going to have to be changing it up. You know what I mean? But right. a lot of mm -hmm. times you've got, you know, old information in there, or, um, you know, and definitely... I think too, having the, that backdrop for pictures is really kind of important too. That's kind of a fun thing that's going to be able to, you know, just like the pillowcase that I showed you earlier, or, you know, some sort of special feature that's unique to your place that is going to draw them in who they want to go. If you've got a, a beautiful trail in the back, maybe you do a, a short video about, you know, something in the spring and, you know, walking through there. I mean, there just, you kind of have to really look at your place. Um, the other thing what I did too, especially right during COVID was to pack up a suitcase. And even though you live at the end, get in your car, drive back up to the end and take a look at it, right? Get your suitcase and then don't go to your number one room. You go to the room, why are they overlooking this room, right? I'm, you get, you go into that room, you go up the stairs, you don't know, you know, that kind of thing as a guest. <laughs> and you let yourself in, you put your suitcase down, unpack it, do the drawer stick. Are they, you know, is the toilet now running and you didn't realize it? You know what I mean? All those yeah, things. Yeah. Are, and you need to stay in that room that night. Right, and right. You know, what, what is it, what's it doing? And then you can make those small changes um, maybe it doesn't look very well. It doesn't photograph very well. Maybe it was too dark on the day that your, you know, your photographer was there. So, and then stay the whole night. You, don't, you know what I mean? And then you pack up your stuff. Definitely take a shower in there. You know, is it hot or cold or you're not getting enough water? 
So those were a lot of little things that I think that then people write, oh, okay, I kind of get it now. You know what I mean? And then just close up um, that they were just small things that you were able to improve um, is, you know, making sure that those horizontal lines are clean. You know, they just don't want a lot of clutter and they don't want to be staying at mom and dad's house or grandma's house. You know, right, they right, want right. A, a fun place to stay. Yeah, that's a good yeah, idea. Dad? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thanks. No, you're welcome. Is there any, anything else? So it looks like uh, Jay just posted on the chat. Um, what is the name of the electronic item that you listed the local places and addresses, telephone website? Robert, how long have you been using them? So it's to Jay, it's called touch stay. If you just mm -hmm. type in touchstay.com, it'll open. Yeah. And Robert, I'll let you answer you know, how long you've been using them and I guess how, how much you like it, I guess. I think I've been using it two, two years. Has it been two years at least? No, no. Maybe not quite two years, but I, I got it at one of the, I guess it was the last Tabby um, conference we had. I think that's when I did it. But um, I just think it's been, it seems like it's been a while. But um, it's, um, I like it. And my guests like it. My guests like it, I like it. But it's just very <laughs> easy. It's very easy to, um, to add things. I just can't, it only takes two minutes to add another location. And it's, it's just very, very quick. I, I have to say, I like Touch Day as much as my guests like the comfy sheets. Oh, <laughs> wow, nice plug. <laughs> so, well, and the, the other thing, too, I think with the touch day, too, is if, you know, once again, if you've got a really kind of a fun place for them to go visit and then they have really good, you know, they can put on a little review and that kind of stuff. It just kind of once again, you're building a relationship, which is great. And then they also say, oh, you know they come back and they say, this was the greatest place we experienced and you didn't even know about maybe one place. Thank you for that information. I would love to add it to the touch day, you know, da, 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 da. and it's quick and simple. And, um, and then what, you know, and then you're basing it on once again, a millennials feedback. And then when they're reading it, they're going to attempt probably to go to that place as well. Well, the other thing that it's just not about the local things too. touch day is everything you can talk about your house, you can tell how to turn the shower on in a room if that's a problem you can tell what the Wi Fi connection is, you can tell them how to use the remote control, it has all these other options of little like chapters you can put in of different things It'll, it can talk about the house you can put the history in. I mean it's endless what you can add you can put your own topics in it's um. It's just very, you'd almost think that I work for them, but it's, no, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's really good. I really do like it. It's, and my guests like it because actually right now I got rid of all of my brochures. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing that I have out is the visitor's guide for Lancaster and there's nothing else out. So they can take that to their room. They can look at the map, but with the touch day, I, I can keep it up to date. I can put, you know, and the, the part that's really nice is that they can, if they're gonna make a reservation for a restaurant, there's a button, they just press it and it dials the uh, phone number to the restaurant because right now you're not sure if the restaurant's open and if they're gonna, they're gonna need a reservation. So I tell them, please call before you go there because um, they might be full, but um, it just makes it convenient and easy for them. Yeah. Um, Robert, how do you, how do you let your guests know about it? Are you sending that like in an email or are you just saying when they get there, hey, we have touch day? <laughs> I send it to them. And the nice thing about it is, is that um, it sort of becomes a benefit while they're here because you can make it so that it only works for a specific period of time. Mm -hmm. And generally oh. I'll make it so it only is active for their stay while here, maybe an extra day. Um, but you can also, like if you have a repeat guest that comes all the time, you can make it permanent. So it's always there. Okay. And they, they actually can put a little icon on their smartphone. So it's always there and all they have to do is just click on it. <clears throat> so it's, okay. it's very easy. And the way that they get the link is that morning, 
um, before they get, when they're still, whatever day they were checking in, I send them a text. You send them an, what is it, SMS, whatever it is, it's a message. And then all that they do is click on it right on their phone. Oh, cool. Are you doing your check-in information through that too? Yeah. Um, you could. Um, I mean, I tell the people, you know, about check-in, like the check-in time and all that. But the um, my system, I have smart key fobs to open up the main door. Then they still have a mm -hmm. key to their room. So there, if I had to, if I wasn't here, I can. I have a smartphone lock on my door that's connected to Wi-Fi, and if I wasn't home. I can actually go to my phone and add in a temporary code so they can actually get in the house. Okay. But, um, and that's what I would typically do if I wasn't going to be here. Then I have a letter on the counter and then it's a long letter explaining all the details of how right. to get in the house and all that. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. Yeah, I believe too with the touch state, doesn't it send them a code if they have um, remote? You know, it'll say it's four six zero or whatever to get in your room. Yeah, you can. That'll show up right that. on the phone. You can do that, but I don't. I don't have that system, so um, I could tell them that if they want to do a self check in, to just put their cell phone number in, and then I would just have to program that into my, which I can do right from my phone. I can program their phone number in to open up the door while they're there, but. Um, it's cumbersome to put in numbers. It's much easier just to put a little smart touch thing up and they can get in the house. Okay. Okay, are there any other questions for Pam or any other comments from anyone else? Um, I just wanted to thank Pam for putting this together and, and for for sharing her insights with Patty, that's great. Can, can we uh, request the pillowcase? If we all do that, is that gonna be a problem? What do you mean? Oh, a pillowcase like that? Yeah, yes, with our with our logo on it. And put yeah, your no, head I don't, here. yeah, I don't see why it'd be a problem. I mean, if I did it for Topher and he's been using it for, whoa, two and a half years. Okay. So, but I just think it was just such a great idea for him to think about, you know, if there's something that you think would be unique to yourself, right? And I'll tell you, when I had this pillowcase up, almost every person <laughs> at Comfy had to put their head in, you know, here and take their picture. It was hysterical. All of them, because I put a pillow in there to make sure that it looked right. And all the employees were like, you know, taking, having their picture taken. And so it was, this was kind of just kind of one thing that you can, you know, just think outside the box is something that's fun. That's going to, you know, give you kind of, it's not going to be free advertising. It will at the time, but you know, cause it's not a free pillowcase, but yeah, something like that. Absolutely. You can request something like that. And there's no, there's no minimums. I think that, um, you know, if you only want what one pillowcase or two or four or whatever, that's thick and that can be done. What is the the Fred? What what was that significance to the to the the inn or whatnot? So it's called the Fred. It's in the Virgin okay. Island. Okay. And so and his crown is his logo. So okay. that's how when people lay back and the crown is right here, and then it says sleep with Fred. So everybody thought that was super funny, right? That is great. So, yeah, and then they Instagram it, and you know, and then they're all flocking there because they want to, they want, you know, technically want to sleep with Fred, but they want their picture on that pillowcase. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. It's it's very clever. It is very clever. I'm gonna have to think. <laughs> <laughs> everybody has a new, every property is unique in some particular way. So that's where you have to kind of look and say, okay, I'm unique at this. And then that's, it's like when you're cooking a meal, once you have the ingredients all there, it's all, and you know what the menu is, it's easy. You can put it together. That's the same way you're going to look at this as well. Is that, okay, I this unique, this, this puts me above all the rest, you know, kind of think of it that way. And then how can I use that to my advantage? 
have an idea. Thank you. Good, good, good. You're welcome. I can see your wheels turning, Dawn. <laughs> Thanks, Robin. <laughs> okay, if there are no other questions, uh, again, Pam, uh, thank you again for taking your time and sharing with us your insights. And uh, Rose will get this out, uh, this recording out to the folks here and then everyone else that's on Pavi too. She'll post that. Um, yeah, thanks again, everyone, for your time. And Robert, right. go ahead. Go ahead, right, Robert. One last question. So, Robin, how do you do the background? Right. So, if you go to your video settings mm -hmm. and you click open the video settings down at the bottom, there's an up. There's a carrot. It says choose virtual background. They come up with stock backgrounds, but you can drag in your own pictures. Um, and just click on you know any background that you want uh, to have. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Wow. I don't know how to do it though. So, yeah, I just went yeah. to California. Yeah, yeah, I'm in San Francisco. <laughs> so I just pull in. I just pull in pictures from uh, from my photo library and drop them in there. And depending on what audience I'm talking to, I drop in a different background. <laughs> That's really cool. You have to yeah. sit in front of a green screen? No, no. I still no. haven't figured it out yet, but. Yeah. Under, yeah. Video filters? Or do you have to have something in here already? No, there's, so when you do your video settings. <laughs> you having fun, Robin. Yeah, I, I am. <laughs> There's virtual backgrounds and video filters right. under the screen. So if you click video, virtual backgrounds, right. it's San Francisco, San Francisco, the moon, I think are the two stars. I don't have anything. I don't have anything here. It says none. Do I have to click the plus? Uh, if you click the plus, that's how you add your own. So you can drag uh, okay. in from, from your files then. Add image. Okay. I'll have to work on this. There you go. You have a, a, a task. <laughs> okay, well, thank, thank you for that input. I like that. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, again, thank you everyone for your time, and uh, we'll have this posted here shortly. Thank until, you. Until the next thank meeting. You so Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.